This video will go over how to remove and install thread together bottom brackets. A thread through or thread together bottom bracket uses a left and right assembly that join in the middle of the shell. The two sides are tightened together to keep the bottom bracket secure and reduce or eliminate any movement. This video will not deal with threaded or press fit bottom brackets. If you think you have a threaded or press fit bottom bracket, see the appropriate video for that process. Thread together bottom brackets come in many different spindle and frame configurations. If installing a new thread together bottom bracket, it must be compatible with both the frame shell and the crank set. See this article to figure out what bottom bracket shell standard you have. If in doubt, contact your local bike shop or manufacturer for parts compatibility and availability. For removing and installing a thread together bottom bracket, some common tools you will need are a bottom bracket tool to fit the cup. See this article for tool selection. A removal tool such as the RT1, RT2, BBT90.3, or the BBT30.4. A 3 8 inch drive ratchet or breaker bar. A torque wrench, 3 8 inch drive. A suitable bottom bracket press for installation, such as the BBP1.2 or HHP3. Finally, you'll need at least one of the following for surface prep grease, anti-seize compound, or retaining compound. This procedure begins with the crank set removed. For crank set removal, see this video. If you have a press fit bottom bracket that you will be replacing with a thread together, see this other video for removal. We're gonna begin by unthreading the drive side. In most cases, you could also unthread the non-drive side first. The order is not important. There is an exception, however. Colleted bottom brackets, such as Praxis, can only be removed by first unthreading the drive side. We will begin by removing the bottom bracket cup on the drive side. Make sure the tool is fully and evenly engaged on the tool fitting. Loosen counterclockwise while applying pressure to the tool so that it does not slip off under heavy torque. If you're using a flat tool, secure it against the bottom bracket with the palm of your hand. If you're having difficulty, it can be helpful to use a bearing press to secure the tool against the bottom bracket. Thread the press through the bottom bracket shell and tool and tighten until the press makes contact with the wrench. Once the bottom bracket breaks loose, you'll need to loosen the press before continuing to loosen the bottom bracket. If the non-drive side is turning as you attempt to loosen the drive side, you will need to use a second tool to keep it stationary. Turn counterclockwise until you have removed the drive side cup. The non-drive side cup differs from the drive side in that it is press fitted into the frame shell. The preferred method of removal is with a removal tool like the RT1, RT2, BBT90.3, or the BBT30.4. For the RT1, install through the drive side to the point where the fingers engage behind the cup. Ensure that the tool is squarely seated and in contact with the cup. It must not be in contact with the frame, and if possible, avoid contact with the bearings. Hold the tool securely and strike with intention. To prevent your bottom bracket from flying away, drape a rag over the non-drive side of the bottom bracket shell. If contact with the bearings is unavoidable, or the inner diameter of the bottom bracket is too small for either removal tool, you can use the drive side cup to remove the non-drive side. Reinstall the drive side cup, two to three full turns into the non-drive side. Place a block of wood over the drive side and tap this with a hammer to free the non-drive side cup. Surface prep will help to prevent corrosion, aid in future removal, and can help prevent noise and wear. The first and most important step is to clean the surfaces. Use isopropyl alcohol or denatured alcohol as it will not leave a residue behind. When cleaning your bottom bracket and bottom bracket shell, make sure to clean until there is no more residue visible on the rag. Next, we will prep both the bottom bracket cups to be pressed into the frame, as well as the threads for threading the two halves together. For the bottom bracket surface that will be pressed into the frame, we recommend grease. Grease fills an important function, acting as a barrier between components and damping potential noise. ASC and other compounds will also work in this area. Contact your bottom bracket manufacturer for their selected preference. 
For the threads connecting the two bottom bracket cups, we suggest Anisys Compound if available. Anisys Compound provides a long-term barrier that is more durable than grease and can aid in future removal. Once you have the bottom bracket prepped, you should consult your bottom bracket manufacturer for installation configuration regarding spacers, o-rings, and other parts. First, we will be installing the non-drive side cup of the bottom bracket. It needs to be pressed in. Be sure to include any spacers if needed. You will press until the flange of the bottom bracket is firmly up against the shell. Next, you will thread the drive side onto the non-drive side cup. And then you will tighten up the bottom bracket to manufacture specified torque, which is typically around 40 newton meters. Once you have torqued the bottom bracket, you are ready to install the crank. Many bottom brackets come with seals and spacers that live outboard the bottom bracket bearings. It is crucial that these go in the correct orientation, and the only way to tell if they are in the correct orientation is to check with your manufacturer. Thanks for watching this repair help video from Park Tool. We're constantly adding videos and articles here on YouTube as well as our website at parktool.com. Please give this video a thumbs up if it helped you out. And of course, subscribe for the latest content from Park Tool.